World War I is a violent event. Many soldiers die. However there are a number of terrible events in which civilians are killed. The Germans are angry that Belgium refused to allow their army though into northern France. The Germans fight their way through Belgium. But they treat the people of Belgium cruelly after capturing the country. What do they do? They starve the people of Belgium during the war. Propaganda in Britain and the United States shows the Germans killing babies. But that is propaganda. There is another greater atrocity than Belgium. It takes place in the Ottoman Empire. You remember the Ottoman Empire and where it's located, right? Oh, yes. The Ottomans are fighting in the Balkans and with the Russians. In 1915, the British and French attack the Gallipoli Peninsula. It goes badly. In 1916, they have to withdraw. It's the greatest victory of the war for the Ottomans. Except, that's just about the only place in which the Ottomans have a clear victory. They are less than successful on the Russian front. The Tsar's armies are more than a match for the Ottomans. In the Middle East the British start off badly against the Ottomans. But the British adapt. Soon they, with the help of local Arabs, are pushing the Ottomans out of the region. So, what is the tragic event? The Ottoman failures fighting the Russians are looking bad for the new group of Ottoman rulers called the Young Turks. They took over the government earlier just before the war. They promised reforms. They promised to revive the fortunes of the Ottoman Empire. They seemed to be failing. How could that be? They weren't as good as they said they were? No. They are really improving the Ottoman government. They just haven't had enough time to make really serious improvements. But the Turks, the Turks in the army and on the street, are questioning their leaders. The young Turks need to deal with this problem. And, they find a way. Someone has to be dragging down the performance of the Turkish nation. Who? The leaders point their fingers at the Armenians living within the Ottoman Empire. Why the Armenians? The Armenians are a very old people. They had a kingdom that once covered most of Turkey before the birth of Jesus. They were the first people to make Christianity their state religion. They did it before the Roman Empire adopted Christianity. In time, the Armenian kingdom gets taken over. Part of it goes into the Ottoman Empire. Part of it becomes a region of Persia. In the 19th century, part of Armenia is in the expanding Russian Empire. So, you're saying, their kingdom is gone. They're being ruled by other peoples. Right. Most Armenians live in the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans have a system they call the millet system. It allows the Jews and the Christians to have a very limited amount of control over their communities. They pay a heavy tax each year. This buys their right to make certain minor decisions for their own communities. The Armenians are Orthodox Christians. They belong to the Orthodox Christian millet. However, by the 1880s nationalism is causing the Armenians to demand their own independent Armenia. It would mean giving freedom and independence to part of the Ottoman Empire. The Sultan will not do that. No one wants to give up their empire once they've won it. Right. There's also another reason. The Turks are Muslim. They don't want to create a free Orthodox Christian kingdom. They suspect if the Armenians become free, they will ally with the Orthodox Russians. Russia has long proclaimed itself the protector of all Orthodox Christians in the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans believe Armenia would not be free for long. The Russians would grab it and add it to the Russian Empire. They already grabbed a bit of Armenia, seized it by force from the Ottomans. I don't get what you're saying. Beyond losing part of their empire, the Ottomans have concerns. They think setting the Armenians free would be creating a new enemy. And it would create a new ally for the Russians. A free Armenia would be creating big security problems for the Ottomans. Beginning in the 1880s, the Ottomans cracked down on the Armenians. They raid villages, towns, and cities. They arrest anyone they think is part of an Armenian independence movement. Each year, the treatment of the Armenians become tougher. Ah, and now there is the war. Yes, now there is the war. The young Turk leadership feels that the Armenians are likely traitors to the Ottoman Empire. Their loyalties lay with the Orthodox Russians. The Armenian community must secretly be rooting for Russian victories. 
a Russian victory would possibly give them the free Armenia they want. The Armenians are disloyal in the eyes of the young Turk leadership, and that makes the Armenians a great scapegoat for what's going wrong in the war. The young Turks want to turn the frustrations of the Turks in the streets toward the Armenians rather than themselves. But the Armenians are being disloyal. It's their chance to stab their Muslim rulers in the back. From what we can see, historically, that's not the case. The Ottomans would not use Armenians in the army during the war. They distrusted them as soldiers. They did use them to do many non-combat jobs for the army. And, the Armenians obeyed and worked in the war effort. Still, as Christians, they could not, they would not be loyal to a Muslim empire. The Ottomans have a right to take measures to protect themselves from a treacherous population within the empire. They're at war you know. Yes. But what they did went far beyond just taking precautions. On April 24, 1915, the Ottoman government began the process of eliminating its Armenian problem. It started a process that eventually intentionally killed 1.5 million Armenians. Some are just outright killed. Others are killed as a result of intentional conditions created during a forced relocation into the Syrian desert. That's not what the Turkish government says today. It is the result of civil unrest within the Ottoman Empire. Civil and fighting within Turkey during the war years. Yes. That's the official Turkish government line today. But it doesn't square with the historic facts. The American ambassador to the Ottoman Empire watched the whole process. He wrote repeatedly to the State Department that the Armenians were being massacred by the Ottoman government. And he indicated that the Germans were helping the Ottomans organize a systematic elimination of Armenian males. Funny, nobody else said anything about it. It was wartime. There were very few ambassadors left in the Ottoman Empire. The United States was staying out of the war at the time the ambassador reported. And he reported in detail. He probably didn't understand what he was seeing. The ambassador's reports are only part of the historical record. There is correspondence between some of the young Turks showing they planned to kill off most, if not all their Armenian population. The correspondence is between the officials who had command of the operation. Armenian males were often outright killed. Not before some torture sometimes. Women and children were beaten, abused, tortured, and starved. Turks ate in front of people they refused to allow any food. They marched them at a fast pace across Turkey without giving them water most of the day. If they collapsed and died, well they died natural deaths. Not a massacre, just the result of civilian displacement caused by the war. That's how Turkey justifies calling the deaths the result of civil strife. But those deaths are planned. Everyone from the war minister to the soldiers marching the Armenians into the desert are in on the scheme. The more dead, the better. You know, just saying what you said will anger the Turkish government. They consider it slander against the Turkish people. And, it's likely anti-Islamic. Oh, I know. It's against the law in Turkey to say that what happened to the Armenians is a planned event. That position defies historical evidence. Evidence from official Ottoman documents. Evidence from eyewitnesses. Evidence from the victims. Evidence from bystanders. Turkish historians, who were uncounted by their government, have published more and more documents showing how the war ministry planned and carried out an industrial-style execution of the Armenians. And today, we know more than ever the role the German army officers in the Ottoman Empire had in planning the massacre with the Ottoman War Ministry. The campaign against the Armenian people within the Ottoman Empire is the first industrialized genocide. Crewed by the standards of the German genocide of the Jews in World War II. Crewed by the standards of, of the German genocide of the Slavs and Russians in World War II. You can't call forced wartime relocation of a group of potentially disloyal people a genocide. Americans threw Japanese in concentration camps during World War II. It is just taking wartime precautions. That's the right of the Ottoman government. This goes far beyond precautions. It is a genocide. An engineered mass killing of a specific people. An engineered killing of a people because of who they are. An engineered killing of a people to eliminate them from society. Turkey spends its time trying to muddy the waters. But planned, engineered, killing regardless of how crudely it's done, 
how sloppy its execution is the mass murder of a people and that's the definition of genocide. Genocide is the planned industrialized mass murder of a specific people with the goal of eliminating their very existence as a people. And during World War I, the Ottoman Empire executed a planned genocide against its Armenian people. In Armenia, the genocide is referred to as the evil happening. In history, it is the rehearsal for the German genocides of World War II.